Okay, this question says, if the radiation of frequency nu is incident on a photosensitive metal, the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons ejected is E. Okay, we have to use Einstein's equation. What is Einstein's equation? We can see maximum kinetic energy is spoken about. K max is equal to energy of photon minus work function. This is Einstein's equation. We will be using this. Okay. Reading forward. If the frequency of the incident radiation is halved, find out the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons given that nu by 2 is greater than threshold frequency. Nice. So, if uh, nu by 2 was less than threshold frequency, we could have directly said, okay, A max will be 0. There won't be any photoelectric effect. Right. But yeah, here it is given that even at half the frequency, uh, you are still above threshold frequency. So, photoelectric effect will be there. Speak about the kinetic energy of the maximum kinetic energy of ejected electrons. That is our aim, right? So, we can say, okay, E will be equal to H nu minus 5. Is this obvious, right? This was our first case where nu was used as the frequency. H nu was energy of photon minus wave function. Uh, work function is supposed to give us kinetic energy which was given to us as E when the frequency was nu. Now, we need need maximum kinetic energy E dash which is equal to H nu by 2 minus 5. Is this also clear? Right. So, uh, how exactly did we get this? We said that, okay, frequency has become nu by 2. So, your nu kinet, uh, energy of photon will be H nu by 2. Work function is still the same, right? It's the, still the same metal. So, work function won't change. So, H nu by 2 minus 5 is going to be your nu E dash, right? So, uh, what can I say about this? Um, you can see all the answers are given in terms of E and nu and all. So, I can see that I need to some way or the other eliminate this 5 right so i am seeing that e dash is going to be h nu by 2 minus 5 but i can't i don't see this 5 in the um, option so obviously i have to eliminate it using my first equation so i am going to substitute from here what do i see this tells me that 5 is equal to h nu minus e right so let me substitute that here right so what am i going to get i am going to get e dash is equal to h nu by 2 minus 5 we got it as h nu minus e right so i am going to write it as minus h nu minus e so minus minus e will become plus e so this is going to be plus e and then i have a plus h nu by 2 minus h nu right so plus h by h nu by 2 minus h nu means minus h nu by 2 will remain so e minus h nu by 2 is what i am seeing as the uh, kinetic energy when the frequency was reduced to half looking at the options the correct answer of course that i can see is d option Okay, this question says 6 grams of oxygen gas at STP is expanded against atmosphere. Nice. So that the volume is doubled, right? Thus, the work done is, right? Now, originally, this uh, oxygen gas is at STP, right? And you have 6 grams of oxygen. Volume is doubled. Now, one thing we have to note is very important is that against atmosphere. What this means is that P external is 1. Right, so P external is uh, one atmosphere, and the volume is doubled here. Right, so as far as um, work done is concerned, we know that it is supposed to be minus P external dV integration. If this is a constant, as is in our case, it will come outside, and we will be getting minus P external into integral dV, which turns out to be minus P external into delta V, which is V final minus V initial. This is our uh, formula for work done when your pH tunnel is constant, right? Now, the thing is that as far as this oxygen is concerned, do we know final volume? No. We know that it is double of initial volume. So, we know that this is 2 Vi. So, what I am going to get is minus pH tunnel into 2 Vi minus Vi is Vi only, right? So, this is my answer. So, what is pH tunnel? 1 atmosphere. So, minus 1 atmosphere into Vi. If I know the initial volume in liters, my job is done. For that, we have been given this is STP conditions. So, if I know the number of moles, I can just multiply by 22.4 to get the initial volume, right? So, I don't know the number of moles, but I know the weight of the oxygen sample, mass of the oxygen sample. So, weight divided by molar mass is supposed to be number of moles, right? So, your number of moles will turn out to be 6 divided by 32, right? O2. 
So 16 to 2, 32 grams per mole is the molar mass of oxygen gas. So 6 by 32 or 3 by 16 is going to be my number of moles, right? Now, what do I need? I need the initial volume. Initial volume will be obviously 22.4 into number of moles because it was given to be under STP conditions. So this is 22.4 into 3 by 16, right? So 16 into... Yeah, 16 into 1.4 is 22.4, right? 16 plus 6.4 is uh, 22.4, yes. 1.4 into 3, which is going to be how much? 3 plus 1.2, which is 4.2. So, initial volume was 4.2 liters. And uh, obviously, if I substitute that out here, I'm going to get minus 1 atmosphere into 4.2 liters, which means my final answer is minus 4.2 liter atmosphere, which is exactly what is given in option B. Again, we have a simple question out here. The question says the ratio of number of sigma and pi bonds in benzene is, right? So, first of all, let's forget resonance and all and let's draw the normal structure that we draw for benzene. Benzene is what C6H6, right? So, C6H6, we normally draw it like this. Obviously, at all of these ends, you have your carbon. Each carbon is attached to one hydrogen. This is one way of drawing benzene. What do I mean by one way of drawing benzene? Because I mean, this is not the actual benzene, right? It, it has a resonance stabilized structure and all. But yeah, let's just uh, say that this is what we have. In this, how many uh, sigma and how many pi bonds are there is what we need to calculate first, right? So you have one pi bond here, one pi bond here, one pi bond here. So you can see three pi bonds, right? So in all, you can see three pi bonds. How many sigma bonds do you see, right? So between these one, two, three, four, five, and six. So in within the ring, you have these six uh, sigma bonds between carbon atoms and each carbon atom is attached to one hydrogen atom via sigma bond again. So I'm getting six more sigma bonds between carbon and hydrogen. So a total of 12 sigma bonds is what I'm seeing. What do I need? I need the ratio of sigma and pi bonds. So my ratio is 12 is to 3, which is 4 is to 1, right? Or simply 4, right? So the correct answer is, of course, option C, 4. Okay, this question says, in comparison to alkaline earth metals, the electron affinity of chalcogens is right so what are we speaking about we are comparing alkaline earth metals which is our group two elements right so two elements what are there beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium let's say right we are comparing these to your chalcogens chalcogens are oxygen family right oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium right so if i'm comparing these elements what i can say is that See, in general, electron affinity is directly proportional to Z effective. More is the effective nuclear attraction, greater is seen to be electron affinity. What is electron affinity? It is the energy released when an electron is added to an isolated gaseous atom in its ground state. And this energy released is proportional to Z effective. And we know on going from left to right, we know that Z effective increases. So obviously, we can say that electron affinity is going to be higher for your chalcogens, right? On top of that, one more thing we have to remember is, uh, as far as these are concerned, these are all what you call as your stable NS2 configuration. They have um, beryllium, for example, is 2s2, magnesium is 3s2, calcium is 4s2 and so on. So beryllium and magnesium doesn't even have an electron affinity. They don't release energy. In fact, they take energy if you're trying to add electron to these. So yeah, these two will not have almost any EA. Yeah, I mean, we say that EA is zero because no energy is released. Electron gain enthalpy is positive. Energy is absorbed if you are adding electron to these two elements, beryllium and magnesium. So yeah, in general also, because of their stable electronic configuration, these would all already have very low EA values. And we are comparing them to an element, uh, to elements or group which is lying towards the right end of our periodic table. Obviously, these would have much higher electron affinity values. So in comparison to alkaline earth metals, chalcogens would have very high electron affinity values, which is obviously option B. 
Okay, this question says one mole each of CaC2Al4C3 and Mg2C3 react with water in separate open flask at 25 degrees C. The numerical value of work done by the system is in the order. Right. So these are the three reactions given to us. CaC2 giving us C2H2 plus COH twice. Al4C3 giving us ALOH thrice and uh, methane 3CH4. And Mg2C3 giving us uh, 2 MgOH twice and CH3C triple bond CH which is propyne. Right. So first one is acetylene HC triple bond CH. Uh, ethine you can also call it e methane and propyne these are the three reactions given to us now order we just have to compare them right so the um, the numerical value of work done of course we know that uh, uh, in this reaction you have solids and liquids that you have taken in the reaction and gases are getting produced and gases have like much larger volume right so what will happen is when you are allowing this reaction to take place consider an imaginary boundary which is experiencing like your atmospheric pressure right now as far as um, uh, this reaction is concerned because it is open to atmosphere and plus gas is also getting released in first one acetylene second one methane and in third one propyne these gases are getting released so we can assume that the imaginary boundary is expanding to accommodate this gas gas inside right so do you see that here the system uh, we are seeing expansion right and expansion is against one atmosphere pressure right so the imaginary boundary is always opposed by external pressure of one atmosphere which means uh, we can say that uh, the pressure of gas is going to remain as one atmosphere we can say that as far as uh, the work done is concerned it is supposed to be minus p external dv integration and uh, minus pH external dv integration because pressure is constant it will turn out to be minus pH external into delta v right now as far as uh, pH external into delta v is concerned what can i say about delta v this delta v is going to be the volume of gas right because nothing else is changing right so everything else is like in solid or liquid form and solids and liquids have relatively low volume changes right so this is all now what we can say is that this is primarily this delta v is because of the uh, volume of gas right so can i say that this will be equal to minus p external into volume of gas which is going to be obviously what what can you say now um, PV for this gas, whatever it is, PV will be equal to NRT, right? So, can I say that uh, volume of gas will be equal to number of moles of gas into RT by P, right? So, can I say that here, this uh, work done magnitude wise, I mean, if you are just looking at the numerical value, we are looking at the magnitudes, we can say that more work is done if more number of moles are there, right? So, if I take one mole each of all of these substances in all the reactions, you can see one mole is there. I can see maximum number of moles are produced in this one, right? So, in your second reaction, Al4C3 is producing 3 moles of methane and your CaC2 and Mg2C3, both of these are producing exactly 1, 1 mole of gas, right? So, for them, volume of gas will be same, right? So, numerically, can I say that uh, 1 and 3 will have the same amount of work done, right? So, we can say that, okay, I will see then... Um, yeah, plus what else is there? I have to compare their uh, values, right? So if I'm looking at the options, I can see that uh, obviously there is only one option where two uh, uh, two of these, I mean CAC2 and MG2C3 are equal. But yeah, I hope you do understand that uh, more this you can say as minus pH external into <coughs> yeah, so one more thing that you could have done is that uh, if you look at PV equal to NRT, we can say that P delta V will be equal to delta N into R into T, right? So delta NG more means that P delta V will be more, which means that minus P delta V, the magnitude wise, uh, you can say that work done will be more, right? So we are looking at the reaction with more number of moles, which is obviously Al4C3. So Al4C3, the magnitude of work done will be more and uh, CaC2 and Mg2C3, they both will have same magnitude of work because they are both producing one, one mole each of gases from one mole of reactant, right? So my final answer is obviously option B.